hello welcome to all so as part of this video we are going to see cache mechanism how to implement in spring boot application so basically we are going to see how to integrate cache mechanism in spring boot application and we are going to see what are the different types of cache mechanism which spring boot will support and finally we are going to see a simple cache mechanism how to integrate with spring boot application so before going to the spring boot application first we need to understand what is cache and why we need it if you see this is a simple diagram so whenever a request came from the user so generally the spring boot application will look for the data inside the database so every time so in case if you don't want to look for the data every time into the database if we have a ready made available data like cache what we are going to see over here so you can pick the data from the cache if it is available in case if it is not that then you can go back to the database and fetch it back then again put it into the cache so that way you can able to avoid heavyweight calls into the database or file store or external system so the frequently retrieved data can be stored into the cache and the same thing can be retrieved directly from the cache instead of fetching from the database or file store or external system so the advantage of cache mechanism it's a lightweight so we are not going to make any heavyweight calls so we are going to reduce the heavyweight calls like a database api calls or external systems so that is the main advantage of the cache mechanism so now let me show you what are the different types of cache types which spring boot will support we can see here there are eight different types of cache mechanisms spring boot will support so all these eight are different types but it's up to us based on our scenario or use case we can able to select the cache mechanism which we are going to implement it so if you see the simple cache which will use concurrent hash map inside the spring boot application itself by default so spring boot application will use this spring cache or simple cache the second one is like eh cache so it's basically it's widely used one and it's a java based one to improve the performance and the third one is like hazel cache when you are working in the multi uh, spring boot or service scenario like cluster scenario so then you can go for hazel cache so this is one of the best use case for when you are working in the cluster environment so like that we can see the cafino it's high performance java based caching library and radish it's data store and it's a distributed cache mechanism so like that we have different cache like a j cache and inpishan and mem cache so these are the different types of cache mechanism spring boot will support so the final we are going to see so how we are going to implement a simple cache with a demo so that we are going to see it okay let's get started a simple demo so how we are going to implement so now i'm going to create a simple spring boot application with the help of start.spring.io so to create the spring boot application i'm going to use java maven and 3.4.3 and it's a jar and 23 so first let me give the package comma test so i'm going to give spring cache i1 is a simple cache so this is my package so let me add two dependencies required first i'm going to add a web spring web i'm going to create a restful service with the help of controller so that's the reason we need spring web now let me add another one called cache so spring cache abstraction which is useful to manage the cache related dependencies so that we need to add it so this is the two dependencies is required after adding these two so you can generate the project so now the project is generated now go back to downloads so you can able to see the project so now unzip this one so the project is unzipped so now you can import this project into eclipse import project existing so this is the first step so you can unzip the project and you can import into 
or Eclipse. Now we can see the package structure. So here you can able to find the a Spring Boot Cache, a main application. So this is the one. So now what we are going to do, we are going to implement two classes. One is controller and service. So before adding controller and service, so what we have to do, we have to enable one of the main thing called annotation called enable caching so meaning so if you want to use a caching mechanism inside your spring boot application you have to enable this annotation enable caching so this is the first step so next step what i'm going to do i'm going to add a controller called user controller And this I'm going to annotate as rest controller. And next I'm going to add another file called my own service called user service. I'm going to annotate this one as service stereotype. So that means now I can see my controller and my service so in this service I'm going to add three methods which indicates three different types of cache attributes what we are going to use it so let me add those three methods now if you see now I have added three methods inside this service so one was one first one is cacheable which will be cache the values based on the key what we are trying to pass it here whatever it's going to return so this will be cached with the help of the key of id type and these operations we can able to tag it that means whenever we are trying to take the data from this database operations call or file system or external system so this will be cached by using the cacheable annotation so that whenever we are looking for similar kind of data with similar id it won't make any call so directly it will try to fetch the details from the cache the second one is cache evict so this is if you want to clear the cache based on some of the key id so you can use this one cache evict so that will clear up your cache and so next time when user is looking for so if, if it is not there in the cache then it will look for the database or external calls the third one is cache put so whenever we are making any update calls so that time we need to update database and also we need to refresh the cache so that's the main usage of cache put so it will update the the existing cache based on the id if it is present else it will try to insert into the cache so now go back to the controller so in controller also i'm going to add three different methods like get put delete so let me add it so now inside my controller <coughs> i have added three methods one for get mapping so what it will do if you want to fetch a user details based on the id you can pass the user id and then you can able to fetch the details second one is if you want to uh, delete a particular user details you can pass the user id and with the help of delete method the third one is if you want to update a specific user details pass the user id and corresponding details and the put method so these are the three different methods we are going to use it to test this service okay so to verify these methods and cache how it will work exactly so let me start my spring boot application first and then we are going to test it with the help of soap ui so this is my soap ui so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a simple rest project so now a rest project i got created so localhost 8080 so be, let me go back so now if you see our spring boot application is ready with the port 8080 so what i'm going to do i first i'm going to call one of my rest service called get details i'm going to pass my user id and then it will come to the service part and it will look for the cache if it is not available then it will go for the db call so that we scenario we are going to verify it so first i'm going to call details method 
slash details colon id equal to 10 so i'm going to call get method so let me open the log clear it out so this is the first time and definitely there is no cache for this one and let me hit so you can see over here so there is a user details it got fetch it fetched and let me check the log so there is a call happened fetch user details with 10 so that means if there is a call happened to the database so we can able to see the log now let me try again one more time i want to fetch this similar user details with the help of soapy i am going to hit the request again and let me clear it out i am going to file the request see the log is generating a soapy website but there is no log at service side so that means it is trying to fetch the user details from the cache it's not generating any log at the service side so that is the usage of cacheable so the user id got cached the corresponding data and it is not trying to look for the database now let me try a different id which is not present at the now let me look for the 11 so this 11 user details are not available inside the cache so what it will do it will try to make a call so let me hit the request now you can see these details got fetch so now let me hit again i am hitting so many times but it's not making any call because it is trying to fetch from the database so now let me again hit 10 so it will not make any database call so that's the usage of the cacheable so it will not make any call if the data is available inside the cache now let me try to uh, delete a particular user which is already present now you can see here that 10 and 11 these are the two user IDs already present at cache now let me delete let me add another request or let me put it over here change delete and what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, delete the user 10 details from the cache send the request now you can see the cache got cleared okay the cache got cleared it's saying that delete the user 10 now let me look for the uh, 10 details what will happen right now it's not present in the cache because it's already cleared it if you fire it again so now it make another tb call so that means the cache got cleared and the details it, it is trying to fetch from the database so this method got executed okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to update the details of the existing user so that means you should make a database call and it should refresh the cache so now i'm going to use a different mechanism called put i'm going to update existing details let me make a call if you see here so there is a update call happened so that means there is a database call happened and also it will update the cache now look for the details again it won't make any call to the database it directly to fetch it so this is the way you can able to use this cache cacheable cache effect and cache put and with the help of different methods you can call get put and delete and you can able to see the results and the main part is we have to add this tag enable cache then only the, all these three annotations will work otherwise it won't work so i think that's all about this video to uses of or to enable the cache uh, with the help of simple cache so though we are not mentioning any specific cache over here but it will use the simple cache and uh, which is the default cache inside the spring boot application okay so that's all about video and thanks for your time